Hello, here we have the amortization table. This is the annual. I'll be showing you how to design the annual and the monthly option. And you can see here we have our variables. The annual option is here. The monthly option is here. The amortization table we have here is the annual amortization table. And we have the monthly amortization table on this sheet. The same variables and this is the monthly amortization. So you can see that for a period of 60 months, we'll be paying for um, 60 months. Yeah. So each month for CC, he's going to be paying for 60 months. At the end of the 60 months, the person has cleared his debt. The same thing, this is a five-year loan, or annual five years. So you see that the fifth year, the loan is cleared, the balance is zero. So I'll be showing you how to do this. And when you change this amount here, you see that the table here will update. So let me change it to like 3 million and see. And watch and see. You see immediately everything here changes. See the amount is still for the other variables is still constant. The five year period and you clear your loan at the fifth year, right? The same thing with the uh, monthly. When you change the variables here, all these details here update automatically. So this is what I'll be showing you in this training. So let's go in and walk step by step on how to achieve that. Welcome. I'll be showing you how to design an annual amortization schedule. That's a loan amortization schedule and a monthly loan amortization schedule. So on this sheet is the annual loan amortization table. And on this sheet, I'll show you how to also set up or design a monthly loan amortization table. So let's just go in and start with the annual. So I have all the variables here. We have the annual option and the monthly option. So on this sheet, I'll be working with the annual option to design this loan amortization table. First is the payment number. The payment number is the number of time the person will be repaying the loan. So this is a five-year loan, loan, and the number of times to pay in a year is one. So you just say five times one, so meaning that the person will be paying five times all through the loan period. So I'll just put one, two, so let me just drag, fill, auto fill and drag to the fifth, good. So we have it, so this five times the person will be making payment. Our opening balance is the loan amount. So I'll just say equal to, I'll link it to this amount and there we go, right? So the repayment amount is the amount we calculated when we were using the PMT, function so i'll see use that function here it's already here i've calculated it here so i can just say equal to and link it but i want to still use the formula to still derive the repayment amount so we say equal to and it's going to be a constant amount all through that's the annual amount the person will be paying every year so equal to pmt pmt the rate is this so it is, this is the rate so you have to divide it by the number of times they will be making payments in a year. And the number of times the person will be making payments is one. So you say divide by this. Now, because I'll be dragging this formula down, I'll make this absolute by pressing F4. Okay, let me select, then press F4. So you select the cell reference and press F4, right? So it puts comma. It takes you to the next argument. The next argument is the loan period. So you select the loan period, that's the loan period. You also times it by the number of times you'll be making payments in a year, and it's once. So you select the cell for the payments, number of times you make payments in a year. So select the entire loan period and make it absolute by pressing F42 because I'll be dragging the formula down. Then the present value is the loan amount, which is this. So I'll also make it absolute by pressing F4 because I'll be dragging the formula down. So I'm done. I'll close the bracket and press enter. Now it's negative because we are paying. Money is leaving with an outflow. So because I've um, designed the formula in such a way that when I drag it down, the other cell fills automatically. So if you say I drag it to the fifth one, it fills automatically. It's a constant amount. The repayment amount is constant all through the loan period. So the next is the capital element of this amount. So we we'll use the PPMT to compute it. PPMT, our rate is this. 
divide by the number of times we make payments. Just watch closely. All I need to do is to select the cell and press F4 to make it absolute. Then the period, which period am I calculating here? This is the first period here. So I'm making this relative because when I drag it down, when I drag to the next cell, I want it to select two. When I drag to the next cell, I want it to select three. So I won't make it absolute. So the next argument is the loan period, which is this period, loan period times the number of times I'm making payments in a year. So I'll select this argument and make it absolute because I don't want it to be altered when I drag it down. So the next, the last argument is the present value, which is the loan amount. I select this loan amount, good, and I'll make it absolute also, good. So I can now close the brackets. I'm done. Right. Wow. So let's look at our formula. Something is missing. It's giving me C6. Okay, C6. My loan, my rate is C8, not C6. So I have to correct that by putting C8. So it's C8, not C6. So I can click enter. Good. So you need to check your formula whenever something is missing. So if I drag it down, it auto fills to the 50th. Good. This is what I want. So the next is the interest amount equals to I'm using the IPMT for the interest. Remember in my previous training, we also did the calculated the interest element. It's still the same method here, right? So the rate is still this rate divided by the number of times I'll be making payments in a year. Remember to place it, to fix it because you'll be dragging it down. Make it absolute. Then the period we are calculating is this first period. We'll make this absolute because when we drag it down, when we drag it to second, third, we want it to be changing to the second, third, and there to the fifth. So we won't make it absolute. So the period we are um, of the loan is this loan period times the number of times we are making payments in a year, which is once. So you select this argument and put it in absolute by pressing F4. All right. So the next argument is your loan amount, which is this. Right, so your loan amount, you make it absolute also, F4. You close the bracket and there you go, 360. So remember I said I would drag it down. That was why I structured my formula that way. That way. Right, good, so we have it. So what's our closing balance? Our closing balance is the beginning balance minus the capital amount. Because the capital amount is already a minus, we'll just say plus, because plus times minus is minus. And here you go. So our opening balance for period two, the second year now will be the closing balance of the first year. Good. So the closing balance of the second year now is equal to the closing balance of the first year minus, or you can even say, let me say the opening balance of this second year minus the capital amount. So because our capital amount is already minus, you just say plus. Right, so select plus and there you go. So from this point, we can fill downward. We can just select and fill downward and see what happens. So you see that at the end of the fifth year, we've already cleared the loan, right? So let's go and do the monthly repayment. The same method here. So for the, for the monthly, for the number of payments for the monthly repayment schedule uh, of the loan amortization table, you calculate how the loan period is five and the payment per year is 12. So five times 12, just say equals to five times 12 to know the number of times you'll be making payments. So this person will be making payments for 60 months. 60 months. So for this loan, the payment will be like 60 months in order to clear the loan. So you start one, two. So I'll just use the auto fill and drag it down to 60 so you can be looking at it when it gets to 60 so that you won't exceed okay 60 yeah we are here so this is the 60th month so that's how you get the payment number so the opening balance as i say you just link it to this we are using the monthly option and there you go remember the repayment amount we use the pmt formula the rate is this, divide by the number of times we're making payments in a year. This 12, remember to make it absolute by pressing F4, right? So we go to the next argument, the number of, that the loan period is 
the loan period times the number of time we are making payments in a year, which is 12. You select that argument and place it absolute by fixing it because we'll be dragging the formula downwards. Then the present value, which is the loan amount, is this. And it's going to be absolute because we are dragging the formula downwards. Good. And we are done here. So when I drag it down, watch and see to the 60th month, we are good to go. Good, because it's a constant amount. As I stated earlier, the repayment amount is constant. So this is the amount we'll be paying every month for the next 60 months. Now let's calculate the capital element of the loan repayment amount. We'll use the PPMT we used before. The rate is this, divide by the number of times you're making payments in that year. Remember to place this absolute because we are dragging the formula downwards and we don't want this formula to be altered. The period is what period are we calculating for? We are calculating for the first month. Now, because we'll be dragging it downwards, we want, as we drag to the second month, it will change to the second, it moves down. As we drag to the third, it moves down. So I won't be placing this B18 in absolute. I'll just move to the next argument, which is the loan period. And the loan period is this loan period times the number of times we'll be making payments in that year, which is 12. And you know it's 60. So you just make, select it and put it absolute. I don't want this argument to alter as I fill it downwards. So comma, then you go to the next argument, which is the last and is our loan amount. Select it and place it in, place it absolute. It has to be in absolute too. Then you close your bracket and there you go. Good. So you can now fill it downwards. Good. So when you get the first formula accurate, the other one is done. And it's your ability to know when to put the absolute reference and the relative reference. So now let's do for the interest element. I will use the IPMT formula. IPMT, our rate. Our rate is this, divided by the number of times we are making payments in that year. Remember to place it in absolute by pressing F4. Good. So the next argument is the period, which is this, and it's going to be relative because we drag it down and we want it to be changing as we drag it down. So the next is the loan period. The loan period is this number, the, the loan period times the number of times we make payments in a year times this. So you select that argument and make it fixed because we don't want it to change as we drag it down. Have that in mind. That's why we make it absolute. We don't want that cell. So the PV is the loan amount. I will make it absolute. Why we make it absolute is that we want the cell to remain the same as we drag it downwards. We don't want the cell to change. Right. So that's the end. So I'll just enter and drag my formula downwards to the 60th month. Good. I believe we are following. Good. You can see we've calculated our repayment. Um, Amount, the capital element, the interest element. Now, what's our closing balance? This opening balance minus. Our capital is already minus, so you plus, plus the capital and see for yourself. Good. So the closing balance will be the opening balance for the period. So, so it's equals to this, and here we go. So the closing balance for period two is equals to the opening balance minus the capital because it's a negative we'll put plus and add it here we go so sorry yes i want to accept it okay my i had to put okay good so now you just select this range and drag it down so why it's why it was giving me that error was that i put equals to plus and i put a parenthesis that is I closed I put a close bracket where there is no open bracket so that was why the error popped up right so I'll just just to explain the reason for that error that popped up so immediately you are done select this this second month because the, the formulas here can be filled downwards so you fill it to the 60th month and let's see if our formula is correct here it's supposed to be zero good we are correct so at the 60th month You've cleared your debt. You've repaid all your loans. So any amount you're changing, if we change this to 5 million now, 3, 1, 2, 3. And you see, okay, 50 million. Yes, yes, it can still give you to the 60th month. And so it's already automated. All you need to do is just to change 
change the amount here and there you go. If you change the amount, you change the interest rate, you change the loan. So these are the variables you can change, right? And everything here will automatically compute itself. Same with the annual amortization schedule. I believe we've gotten value from this. If we have, please don't forget to like this video, share to as many that will benefit from it, and subscribe to my channel for more value tips. Thanks for staying on and see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.